And then welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Asimo Timothy. We are going to discuss more about a sword slab as one of the slabs we use in Uganda. Uganda's construction industry usually rotates on different types of slabs that are commonly used and applied in different structures. When we talk of high-rise structures, we have got sword slabs, max pan slabs, steel slabs, and waffle slabs so common, commonly used by different clients based on different advantages. Today, this is another thing that we are going to discuss about. Asimo Timothy is your engineer. Welcome to our YouTube channel. If you find this information about the sword slab that we are going to discuss more effective and helpful, Ensure to subscribe and like. Don't forget to comment or ask any question about anything that you would like us to reply about you. Thank you so much. Um. Then welcome back to our YouTube channel. This is Asimo Timothy. We are going to discuss more about a sword slab as one of the slabs we use in Uganda. We say it's the most common ones are waffle slabs, sword slabs, and max pan slab. Today we are having a structure where we are going to see how a sword slab can be entirely designed. So we are considering as usual our panel. We have got a panel here that is shown as we are here and this time it is with a sword slab. We are going to see how the sword, the sword slab is more effective in transferring the loadings. So this is a beam. As you can see it here, we have got another beam there. We have got another beam here and another beam here. So when you're designing a sword slab, it is usually referred to as a two-way slab whereby it transfers loadings in four directions. For this panel that we are having here, this side we call it a discontinuous side, whereby the side is not continuing, that's why the beam is stopping. This side is also a discontinuous side. Then here we call it a continuous side because we have other beams going that side. Then here we have got a continuous side whereby the, the side is continuing. So we consider this when we are designing and when we are using a program for design, we also put those conditions. Because in sword slab they are going to ask what is the condition for this side, the condition for the other side, and the condition for this side and this side. So this is discontinuous, these two beams, then here, these two are continuous. The beauty with the sword slab is it transfers loadings in uh, both directions. So for example, we shall have loadings going to this beam, have loadings going to this beam, have loadings going to this beam, and have loadings going to this beam. That is why it is one of the effective beams that we use uh, in the design of structures and these days it has become so common even more efficient than even other types of slabs so we are going to see how and what to do when you are designing one when you are designing the sword slab we consider the thickness of the slab it is how we save how much is the thickness most of the times you see the thickness then after you see the beams that are going to save those loadings then we see also the spacing of bars that are within there the thickness of the slab that you have designed. So if you have those and they are all passing, you find it is easier to transfer loadings and most of the times the most effective slab, soundproofing, that is more reliable is the actual storage slab. Because it's what they use in the bankers, it's what they use in uh, uh, prisons, it's what they use in uh, uh, those safety places because of its high qualities of soundproofing and transfer of loading and it's also ability to withstand a lot of loading. So that is how it is easier to design a sword slab. So the loadings can be transferred in either directions after analyzing that. So that is basically a sword slab. Then we see the materials that you are going to consider. When you are doing a sword slab, we consider mostly bars, uh, concrete, that is a mixture of uh, aggregates, uh, cement and sand. Then maybe possibly a format to carry it, meaning that it is easier to make. We don't see other things. We see only those, apart from those compli complicated designs where you add some uh, adding mixtures maybe to improve the quality of concrete but with those ones we can easily design our slab then we see the concrete cover the thickness then we see the length and how we can uh, handle the loading and distribution so let's see how we can handle the design for this simple panel for a solid slab one you're going to first see how you can help the client save because the purpose of using a solid slab is actually to save you know sometimes when you use max pans you find that uh, their ribs are entirely need 
T12 bars, when you capture the concrete and everything you are going to use and the cost of max pans which has increased, you find they are a bit more costly nowadays compared to even the sword slab if you compare the design. So we have to make sure that we design a sword slab that is cost effective for the client. What does that mean? It means that I'm going to pray with the steel. That is where the advantage is for a sword slab. How do I play with my steel? For example, this slab of ours, we captured all the loadings and they had that edge, which is discontinuous. This one is also discontinuous. That uh, support system at that condition it was continuous. Here, it was also continuous. Then we had to play with the steel work. If you can see the steel work that we used here, the distribution bars were T10, which we are passing. Then uh, uh, these are the ones which are carrying the other ones. Then these other ones were T8. And they were passing so well. The area of steel when you have T10 and uh, T8, they were passing so well in my small panel like this. Implying that the cost of bars in this solid here is going to be so less because I've got small diameter bars which are helping me. Why are they effective? When you use a solid slab, it is a two-way slab. What happens is the loadings that are here, being that this is a square panel, we shall see even in design, possibly in the office, that the loadings are going to be in different directions. So you find that loadings are going this direction, others are going this direction, others are going this direction, others are going to this direction implying that here usually on the centroid of the solid slab you're going to have less loadings and you find it is very effective because the distribution of loadings is in two different four directions implying that it does not strain so much when you are you are carrying out a design for the solid slab which makes it require less bars in size which means less cost of bars which means that you can have savings based on design so that is how we design the solid slab so other things that we consider is the thickness most uh, usually consider maybe 150 125 millimeter thickness slab based on the effective depth ratio but usually we can even control based on the formwork and make sure that we don't have a lot of concrete going so what is left is uh, mixing uh, concrete of course uh, mixing uh, that's a uh, aggregates then uh, sand and uh, cement to ensure that we have our concrete mixed and we cover up this entire area that is after piping and putting there all plumbing activities but one of the things that have been discovered and found effective with new structures it is common in those structures that's a solid slab you can even do a solid slab with a t8 bars t10 bars and make sure that it is effective and distributes all the loadings properly. So that's why people are loving and coming back to solid slabs, like those days where max pans were so common nowadays. So that is why we design them at office. We have told you always that first we do all slabs, max pan, waffle, uh, solid slabs, steel slabs. So we are good at all of them. So based on an advantage the client sees, that's what we consider to recommend a slab.